Let's get to some underrated guys on the Jets and Giants. PFF put out an article this past week about underrated players on both these teams. And uh, for the New York Giants, we'll start there. Uh, Okarake was the answer, which I think is is appropriate for this Giants team. Bobby Okarake was a really nice addition for them last year. Bobby Okarake is arguably the best free agency signing that the Giants have made in the last decade plus. And they've had some good ones, honestly. Like Damon Snacks Harrison was a great one. Janoris Jenkins, Dominic Rogers, Camardi. Those guys were great for the Giants for a few years. But Okarake, the way that he just immediately transformed the entire defense overnight as just a one player, one signing, plus the value of the contract, four years, 40 million, 10 million per Really great deal there. I mean, for the level of quality that they got last season, I think Okereke should have been an all-pro player. When you look at his stat sheet, absolutely stuffed up the box score. Interceptions, a career high. Sacks, career high. Tackles, almost a career high. Tackles for loss, a big career high. Past, past offenses. The guy did it all, and he really was the glue that held the defense together. And you could see the ceiling for this team just continuing to rise as he plays better and the Giants build around him. So, we went like a decade plus without having good inside linebacker play. Okereke immediately stepped in and just fixed it. So love him. think he's a very underrated player. I feel like outside of the Giants fan base probably doesn't get a whole lot of recognition, but definitely deserves some more. Should have at least been a pro bowler last year. And I'm hoping that he continues to build on what he set out last year. Yeah, absolutely. I think he did. As you said, he did just that. The Giants have kind of struggled that inside linebacker for a while now, and he really settled it down. 149 tackles, two and a half sacks. The tackles for for loss, 11. He was flying around the field making plays. Uh, and he's still in his prime. You know, last year was his age 27 season. So he's going into his age 28 season, turns 28 in July. And I think is, you know, going to be one of the leaders on on this defense. He, he plays his role well. It was a really good free agency addition. And I don't know, I think sometimes we see in free agency, like, some of the older players end up getting overpaid, but you got someone in their prime at a fair market value deal. Like that's so rare to me in free agency. So really good signing. Yeah, totally agreed. I, the only other thing that I would say is in terms of the Giants, most underrated player, according to PFF, they went with Okereke. Definitely could have made the case for my guy, Darius Slayton. I know I've kind of talked about how underrated I feel he is on the show quite a bit. And on pretty much every show I do, I'm a big Darius Slayton fan and I, I i really think that he deserves more recognition and he deserves some better quarterback play to actually let him go for a thousand receiving yards because i think the talent is there the ability is there just the ability in terms of throwing him the ball and putting him in position to succeed hasn't been there but yes yeah, slayton and okara are the giants two most underrated players in my mind yeah i totally agree with that uh, slayton's a, a good one for the offensive side of the ball for the defensive side and maybe overall i i would say okara i i think Okereke is a better linebacker, like in comparison to the rest of the league linebackers, and Slayton is a wide receiver. So I I would lean with o Okereke, but Slayton is a good answer. Like he's just been solid for that team for a long time. So I'm good with that one too. Totally agree. I I, I think that, like you just said, in terms of relative to the rest of the league, Okereke is probably pushing into the top five to ten in his position. Can't say the same for Slayton, but in terms of being a really solid WR two. I don't know if you can find much better than Slayton. That's true. And for the Jets on this list, their most underrated is a is a popular answer, but it's DJ Reed. So obviously, Sauce Gardner as cornerback one gets a lot of the recognition and deservedly so, one of the best corners in the league. But his running mate, DJ Reed, also deserves some love too. Uh, last year, I want to see if I could pull up his numbers from PFF uh, on what it was that he actually allowed. It was, let's see uh 100 and, oh no that's yard after the catch okay 475 yards and two touchdowns allowed uh on the season 61.4 reception percentage I, I mean does that's really solid for a number two i wish these guys would get a little more interceptions he only had one and sauce did not have one last year um but six pass breakups I, I thought he was good, and you can, again can't ask for too much better at your your number two cornerback spot than a guy like DJ Reed, who probably is close to a top fifteen corner in the NFL. Yeah, I mean you're not wrong. He's definitely pushing up into that range, and 
listen, to have two solid cornerbacks like that is very, very valuable. Obviously, you've got Sauce Gardner, and he's going to attract a lot of attention, and that's going to create a little bit of a shadow for Reed to play under, but it's important that PFF highlights his performance, and you know, like you're mentioning, very underrated. He's just a good guy, a good player for this Jets defense, and if he continues to play well with Gardner and some of the other pieces that the Jets added, like I said, I think this starting lineup from start to finish is pretty stacked and pretty much set at every position, and Reed plays a big part in that. I'll give you – I have two other guys that stand out. I mean, on the Giants, we found the guy on offense. So I have a Jets guy on offense that I'm thinking of. But I actually think Reed is starting to get a little bit more of the recognition he deserves. So I don't know if I would call him underrated as much. But I think their slot corner, Michael Carter, is more – is becoming the more unsung hero uh, of that group. Uh, it, there seems to be kind of a debate, both guys going into the last year of their deal – like if you had to pick one of the two, which one would you rather? And I love DJ Reed. I just think as an outside corner, he's going to cost you more. He's a little older. Well, Michael Carter's a couple years younger than he is, and slot corners don't make as much. So I, I think they would probably choose him over DJ Reed. But again, like slot with teams going three wide as their base personnel more often than not, like you need to have a really good slot corner. And I think the Jets do have that in Michael Carter. I, I do agree with you. The nickel cornerback position is just becoming more and more important and overlooked. So, yeah, in terms of someone being underrated, you might make an excellent point with that. And, again, a lot of that is just a sense that NFL fans seem to not really value that spot, the the slack cornerback. But believe me, NFL teams do because it is such a pass-heavy league and you see so much 11 personnel now. But I do have a solution here just to make things easier for the Jets so that they don't have to worry too much about who to extend. They can always just trade – read over to the New York Giants for like a fifth round pick. I think that's fair enough value for our end. And, you know, then we're all happy here, right? Uh, one of us would be very, very happy. The other, maybe not not so much. But the the offensive guy, which I think might be a little bit of a hot take to some because where we were talking about the, the draft a few weeks ago, but I think Tyler Conklin's actually a little underrated at tight end. He finished 11th in receptions for tight ends and 13th in yards last year. Um, so I'm not saying he's a he's an all you know all star or all pro tight end, but I think he's a capable NFL starter. And as uh, our guy Johnny says, with better quarterback play, going to Aaron Rodgers, I think is going to have uh, impact there. Definitely, I, I like this comment as well. Rodgers elevating the wide receivers, kind of like I was talking about earlier. You've seen it with some of these Giants players, like Darius Slayton not getting his game elevated until Tyrod Taylor came in at the end of the season. Slayton elevated his game, or I guess Tyrod Taylor taking some deep shots did that. But yeah, pay Slayton. I think that he definitely deserves that extension. Uh, but Rodgers is absolutely going to be able to maximize the talent around him. And that's why I think you can be really high on a guy like Malachi Corley going into the year where I think he's a prospect that was very much how good he's going to be is going to depend on the situation that he lands in. Landed in a great situation with the New York Jets. I think that they're going to be able to find ways to get him the ball and Rodgers is going to play a big part in that. Yeah, re, re, get get Slayton a, a new contract. He deserves a pay raise and uh, attack on a couple more years after that. I think it's uh, best for both sides here uh, on that one. So we hit on both teams' underrated guys. 